Breaking news from Chile, where a massive earthquake has killed at least 78 people and triggered a tsunami. This is a big one. The magnitude 8.8 quake struck during the night and was much more powerful than the one that devastated Haiti, which was a magnitude 7.0. Severe aftershocks were felt this morning. Tsunami warnings are up for Hawaii, Alaska, and the coastal areas of California and Oregon right now. Joining us now by phone is Jessica Segala, a geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey. She's in Golden, Colorado. Jessica, good morning. Good morning. So tell us first off, can you give us some perspective on how strong an 8.8 .8 earthquake is? What are we talking about in terms of intensity? Okay, um, I can compare it to the 7.0 earthquake that happened in Haiti in January last month. Um, in terms of energy release, the one, in, the one that happened in Chile released about 500 times more energy than the one in Haiti. 500 times more. Yes. Jessica, also, can you just speak to the tsunami warnings that are out there right now? Uh, with an earthquake of this magnitude, what time, I mean, as far as the type of energy that you just spoke about, how does that then translate to what the coast of Hawaii, California, what they're dealing with, um, you know, in the Chilean area right now from a tsunami standpoint? Right. Um, well, when the earthquake occurred, it, it moved the land and then it moved the water above it, causing the tsunami. And the coastal areas of Chile have already noticed the wave heights up to about seven feet. And so we're seeing that along the coast of Chile. And as soon as we get to Hawaii, they expect to see the waves from this tsunami around 11.20 Hawaiian time, which is about... 4.20 p.m. Eastern time, so we have to wait and see to see how big the waves will be there in Hawaii. Now, when you say a seven-foot wave, I'm sure people at home are saying, well, a seven-foot wave, that's no big deal. But it's really, it's not so much the height of the wave, it's the, it's the width, it's how long, the, the duration, and then it's also the speed at which it's traveling. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but these waves are traveling at, at the speed of a, of a jet liner, about 500 miles per hour, correct? Yes, that's very correct. Uh, and with... With, it, it's just not one, one sheet of water. It's a big chunk, a big block of water coming onto the land. We're starting to get some of the pictures out of Chile, and they're just devastating pictures of, of buildings collapsed and such. Um, we know that the damage is going to be extensive, but what about aftershocks now? How many can people there expect to feel? Is this a, a real concern as well? Uh, aftershocks are definitely a concern. We always see aftershocks with a large quake and a shallow quake, which this one was. And as of right now, we've located about maybe 15 aftershocks, and those are of the larger kind. I'm sure they've felt much more than that. And what does that mean, that it's a shallow earthquake, and how does that affect the damage and, and so on? Uh, a shallow earthquake just means that it happened pretty, pretty close to the surface. It, it didn't happen right on the surface, but it happened at about... Um, it, it happened just under the surface, and because of that, the energy is, is really close to the surface and where we are, all the buildings and people. Jessica, let me ask you this. When you hear about a number like this, an 8.8, .8, um, what do you, the people you work with, I mean, how much do your ears perk up? How much does this get your attention? It perks up our attention greatly. We only see about, on a yearly basis, on average, we see about one magnitude 8 earthquake every year. So it this is very alarming for us. <laughs> All right, Jessica Segala, thank you for joining us. She's with the U.S. Geological thank you. Survey.